What's up, everybody? Hope everybody's doing good. We're ready for a, a really scary story here. Like I said, for all of October, it's going to be all paranormal. So I hope you guys like paranormal. I know maybe some of my uh, prison story fans out there, you know, might get pissed off, but hopefully, uh, you know, they stick around because I'll be back with prison stories uh, starting in November. But anyway, uh, welcome back to my followers. Um, if you're a new listener, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. You know, if you, if you like my story, um, just real quick, you know, I just want to say about the, um, you know, the donation link that I'm going to leave in the comments. It's totally voluntary. And, you know, I've only had one person kind of, you know, complain about it. Like, hey, man, I'm not holding the gun to anybody's head. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to pull a jack move on y'all motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, I'm not trying to get rich off this channel. I enjoy telling the stories to you guys and. I enjoy reading your guys' comments and interacting with you. I'm just trying to make a little bit of gas money. That's about it. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, um, this story is going to be about a house that me and my family moved into um, on the south side of my hometown that I grew up in. Um, it was a pretty old house. Um, I, I wrote some notes down for this one. Um, it was a pretty old house. If I had a guess, I'd say maybe like from the 40s or 50s. Could have been a little bit older. Could have been a little bit newer, but it was a pretty old house. Um, like I said, I was 15 years old. Um, I was in high school. I think I was like a sophomore, maybe. And uh, so like when we first moved in, you know, the house, you know, it needed a lot of work, you know, so we had kind of started on that. And I know uh, a lot of people say, like, in the paranormal investigation videos and stuff, like, when you start doing work on an old house or remodeling or something, um, a lot of times that disturbs the spirits or whatever, you know. And, you know, maybe that's what was going on here. But uh, pretty much started. Um, oh, and real quick, I'll just say I have, you know, quite a few other stories about this house, too. So I'll probably be doing, uh, like, at least two or three other videos about this house. But anyway... Um, it all kind of started uh, maybe about a couple nights after we moved in. Um, my bedroom was closest to the uh, to the living room and to the um, kitchen. So the very first, uh, well, I don't think it was the very first night, but maybe like second or third night, um, you know, it was like maybe about, I don't know, about, I'd say like 11 or 12 at night. And uh, I had already fallen asleep. And I don't remember if it was like, you know, what night of the week it was, if it was on a school night or not. But I was asleep. And I remember hearing some sounds in the kitchen. And, uh, you know, at first I thought it was maybe my brother because I had an, an older brother that was like in his early 20s that um, pretty much, you know, all he did was party with his friends and used to come home high as fuck <laughs> and drunk as fuck. You know, sometimes he would come home with the munchies, like making all kinds of noise and uh, leaving burnt balonies all over the place. <laughs> he literally he left a, a freaking pan on one night and I smelled it and I went out there and uh, there was there was two balonies burnt to a uh, crisp, like little charcoals inside the frying pan. I had to turn it off and there was like a freaking trail of balonies on the floor, like, you know, like freaking you know, like those butcher bags of bologna, like it just exploded and bologna's flew everywhere. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what I, that's who I thought it was. The first night I was like, damn, man, my brother came home all, you know, high as fuck with the munchies and he's making some noise, all kinds of noise. Right. So I got up just to like, you know, just to make sure just to, you know, be safe. I had a baseball bat that I used to um, sleep with next to my bed, you know, just in case, you know, so I get my, I grab my baseball bat and I walk to the living room and I look in the living room and it's completely dark and I look towards the kitchen and it's completely dark and I'm like, oh shit, that's weird. Like, you know, why would he be like, you know, in the dark, you know, trying to make something to eat. So, you know, I kind of snuck to the kitchen and, and, you know, I peeked in there and then turned on the lights really quick and it was weird because... Like, maybe, like, three or four of the cabinet doors were open. 
Um, and a couple of the the drawers, uh, like with silverware and stuff, were like pulled out and just left like that, you know. So um, I was like, damn, that's crazy. So, you know, but again, I still kind of thought maybe it was just my brother. Like maybe he was just in, you know, in and out kind of quick. And, you know, maybe I just didn't see him going to his room or whatever. So I didn't really think too much of it the first night. Um so then maybe like, um, I don't know if it was the next night or a couple of nights later, pretty much the same thing happened again. Like, um, I would say like probably about two or three more times, the same thing happened. And, um, you know, so I was like kind of tripping, like, what the hell? And then I asked my brother about it. Like, man, you be coming home uh, late at night, making noise in the kitchen and then running out of there or something. And, <laughs> and you know, of course he was like, no, nah, man, it wasn't me, you know? So, um, you know, I told my mom, I was like, man, something weird is going on. You know, like I keep hearing like, um, you know, sounds late at night in the kitchen. And then, uh, I go in there and freaking like the, uh, doors to the cabinets are open and, and freaking, um, the, the drawers are open, you know, like where the silverware's at and stuff. And I'm like, man, that's kind of weird, you know? And then I think I might've said like something about, um, about maybe the house is haunted or something. And, you know, my mom was like, Cállate, no estás diciendo eso. you know, like basically like shut your ass up. Don't be saying no shit like that, you know? <laughs> and I was like, well, sorry, mom. I don't know what else to think. You know, I mean, that's pretty weird. You know, I mean, it's not doing it by itself, you know? So anyway, you know, nobody believed me, of course, you know, I was just a 15 year old kid or whatever. So, um, and so one night, um, I guess my sister, you know, uh, my sister lived there too. She was about, I think maybe 18 or 19. And um, she got up in the middle of the night. Oh, and I kind of forgot to explain the layout of this house. It was kind of shaped like a long, um, like a long rectangle, like the living room and the kitchen was on one end. And then there was like uh, one bedroom and then another bedroom, which was mine. And then there was a long hallway. Um, and then there was two more bedrooms at the end of the, on the other side of the house. So it was shaped like a long rectangle. And uh, so my sister's room was the furthest room from the um, the living room and the kitchen. And it was at, you know, it was at the end of a long, dark hallway if you didn't turn the light on, right? So, you know, my sister said she... Um, she got up to get like a glass of water or something and um, she didn't want to wake anybody up. So she didn't turn the hallway light on. So, you know, she said she walked to the kitchen and everything was cool. And then she, she poured her a glass of water and then she, you know, just drank it really quick. And then she said right around the time she finished her glass of water, she said she got like just kind of a weird feeling like, um, like a chill, I guess. Like if she wasn't alone, like, you know, like if somebody was there with her or if she was being watched, you know. So she said she kind of looked around, you know, got kind of creeped out. And then she started walking back to her, you know, back towards her room, you know. And um, so she said she got to the hallway and, you know, she was like, she said she was tempted to turn the light on. But, you know, she kind of like thought to herself, like, oh, I'm being silly. You know, I'm being dumb. Like, there's nothing and then she was like, I don't want to wake, you know, everybody up turning the light on. Right. So, um, oh, and I forgot to mention her, my mom's bedroom door was right next to my sister's bedroom door at the end of the, um, the hallway. Right. So my sister starts walking down the hallway and she said that feeling got worse. Like, um, you know, like, um, something was behind her, you know, like, like, um, she wasn't alone. And then she said she heard like breathing, like loud breathing. And she felt like almost like breath on her neck. Like she felt like something was breathing, you know, literally on her neck. So she was afraid by then. She said she was terrified and she was afraid to turn around. Right. So she said she tries to rush. She didn't run because she said she was afraid that, I don't know, that would escalate it or something. Right. So she walked as fast as she could to her bedroom door. And she said right when she reached to her bedroom door, she said she, I swear to God, this is what my sister says. She said she felt like something lifted her off the ground, like she was levitated. 
and she said she she you know she couldn't tell for sure because it was dark but she said she looked down at her feet and it looked like her feet were about like four or five inches off the ground you know i mean i don't know about you guys but i would i would have probably screamed too but anyway my sister said when she looked down and saw her feet off the ground she said she screamed and and i remember hearing it right she screamed like bloody murder just like a loud horrible scream right and so i woke up immediately and um i run out to the hallway and i see my sister standing in front of her bedroom door my mom was already out there she had just opened the door and my sister was just crying i mean like just uncontrollably crying like blubbering you know like just um crying to my mom you know saying that something grabbed her and something lifted her up you know and um so i come running up and i'm like you know what's wrong what's wrong and, you know because i was being protective over my sister right and then my sister started telling me something you know grabbed me something lifted me up i could hear it breathing and then you know just not even thinking i look at my mom and said i told you it was haunted and then she turns to me and she was about to smack me man she was like Caita la boca. <laughs> you know <laughs> and all the mexican people out there and probably seen some of the uh, english pe people speaking people know what i'm talking about like she was basically like shut the hell up before i smack your ass you know and i was like sorry you know like hey you know i'm, I'm just saying you know you didn't believe me you know but um yeah it it scared the crap out of my sister and um you know, she understandably, you know, didn't really like talking about it. And I tried asking her about it, like maybe about, I don't know, I'd say like maybe about five, six years ago. And she, she got kind of pissed at me. She's like, I don't want to talk about that. Don't ever bring that up again. <laughs> so I was like, damn, you know, I mean, I just kind of wanted to try to get some more detail out of her. But yeah, so um, something definitely scared the crap out of her, you know, and um like I said, I got some more stories about that house, you know, that I'll be doing, you know, um, you know, during this month, if not, you know, in the future, I got quite a few paranormal stories, you know, and maybe some people might be thinking like, how, how does this guy have all these paranormal experiences or, you know, all these interesting prison stories, you know, and I'm not trying to act like I got the most interesting life or anything like that, but I think I definitely do got some, um, some interesting experiences, you know, and, that's why I want to share them with you guys, you know, and hopefully you guys enjoy them. Like, you know, I enjoy telling them. But like I said, um, this is it for now about, you know, my haunted house and my family's experiences. And uh, for now, that's it. Your homie, Big Cisco. Peace. <laughs>